where are we and where do we need to be? Um, one of the challenges we have in life, oops, okay, good, let's stop there. Look at the diagram very, very clearly. What do we see? Can anybody tell me? Okay. On the plains of Africa, when that zebra gets up in the morning, it knows that it has to run faster than the fastest lion. If not, what happens to it? Good. And that lion also knows that if it doesn't catch the slowest zebra, what happens? Good. So, on the plains of Africa, when the sun comes up, whether you think you're a lion or whether you think you are the zebra, you'd better be hustling. So we better move forward with life and we better talk about how we're going to hustle. Oops. But you will notice with the zebra, it doesn't have a crash helmet. It's not secure. And one of the things about life is while you hustle, please find ways not to crash and burn. This is the thing we have to keep in mind. Now, I don't need to bore you too much with too much uh, technology and jargon, but we're in the cyber age. Whether you think you are or you are not, whether you are into the technology or you are not, it is the reality of where we exist. And one of the challenges that we see is that there is a shift in the balance of power. Is it WikiLeaks? who tells us everything the government doesn't want us to know? Is it Anonymous, whom we don't really know, but who attack our infrastructure to drive home certain points? Or is it traditional government that we are used to? And these are a lot of questions we have to ask ourselves. For example, the UK Department of Defense says they have over 600,000 botnet attacks every day it's not just about attacking governments, even private sector entities, Visa, MasterCard, even Nigeria. About a year ago, the Nigeria.gov, which is supposed to be our flagship national website, was brought down through a denial of service attack. And very quickly, a denial of service basically is you infect millions of computers with, whether you call it a worm or a virus is not important. But what that entity does, it tells all those computers at the same point in time, go through this door. Ask this website for something. And you look at this hall today, the door over on my right. Can you imagine if 100,000 people wanted to go in at the same time, what would happen? It would break apart. That is what denial of service is all about. But the real issue I want to put across to you is why was the denial of service attack foisted on our, our national website. The gentleman who happened to be Irish was interviewed and said, you know, waiting concern you and Nigeria, Irish man. He said, well, the Nigerian Senate passed an anti-gay law. And because of that, he felt he needed to teach us a lesson. So it's politics. But my point here is that it affects all of us, you and I. Do you remember the Tunisian Revolution? Some, or was it the spring, we called it? Hackers went after some key Tunisian government installations, two of them in particular. One was the Central Bank Clearing House, and the other one was what we call the top-level domain. When you hit the Central Bank Clearing House, if you can bring it down, you cannot get money from your ATM. You cannot get money with your card. You cannot transfer money. You cannot receive money. Imagine that happening for an hour, for a day, for a week. What would happen to our economy? And these things have also happened in places like Estonia and Georgia. Again, in 2013, we are told, the statistics tell us that over 40 million cyber incidents 
occurred. Things are happening. We are sitting in this hall very comfortably, but there's a lot going on around the world. I'm not here to scare you, but I'm here to tell you that these challenges present us with opportunities. We need to protect the users ourselves. We need to protect our infrastructure. And we need to protect our processes. We don't expect somebody from somewhere else to come and protect us in our own home. We have to do this ourselves. Mobile phones. Latest statistics tell us in Nigeria we have over 130 million mobile phone lines in use. We have a capacity of about 170, but 130 million are in use. So we must look at mobile infrastructure because each and every one of us in this room today, I'm sure, uses a mobile phone. But we also must use cloud infrastructure and look at how to protect it. When we go online, we don't know who is the dog and we don't know who is the real deal. You have a young brother, sibling, daughter, cousin, 13 years old, 12 years old, talking to another 12-year-old. In many instances, that other 12-year-old is not a 12-year-old girl or boy, but a 69-year-old man who is a pedophile. So how do we protect our children? It's critical we think about this. Many of us here in the audience today care passionately about our privacy. We care that our personal, our HIV status is private. It's for us. But yet, what do we do? We post our life and our misgivings and our thoughts about people on Facebook. 1.5 billion users. If Facebook was a country after China and India, it would be the third largest country in the world. And yet, we broadcast our personal information on all of it. So security starts with us. And yes, we can't hide anymore. I promise each and every one of you, if I took off my shirt and my trousers and my underwear and started dancing for you, what would you do? Bring out the camera and go click, 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 click. I say, look what happened at Ted. You can't hide, so you must comport yourself. We've had cases of officials, I think it was LASMA, where somebody was recorded. Remember that incident? It happens. This is part of we individually and collectively securing ourselves. Who else uses the cloud? Some very, very interesting characters. How many of us in this hall today have tried to download a TED video? Please put up your hands. Has it been easy? It's been very easy. I think for me it's been difficult. Sometimes it stops in the middle one. But Boko Haram can post a 30 minute, a 40 minute, a 59 minute video online. How do they do it? It's interesting, isn't it? They also send a lot of uh, SMS texts to people. And so, even in this part of the world, we have men. They used to send a lot of email messages. So these groups also, these interesting characters, are using and leveraging these technologies. So who are your adversaries? Think about it. Who are we up against? Now, I'm going to show you a photograph of some youngsters. Remember, this was in 2002. They actually hacked into some of these websites. The ringleader is the person in the middle. <laughs> you laugh. How many of us in this room, please put up your hand, can hack? How many of you have 12 years experience at hacking? Oh, and you think you can compete with them. You're in trouble, big trouble. We have our national st strategic interest. We must create jobs. We must start by protecting ourselves for us, by us. We must be able to reduce the cost of IT. This administration, for example, is banking a lot of its reputation, of our money, of our effort on broadband technology. If broadband works for us, it will be wonderful. But who here will use broadband if it is not safe? 
Who will go to the market if it is not safe? Who will drive on the roads in the night if it is not safe? So our safety and security will, is the only guarantor that these technologies will work for us. For those of you over there, this cybersecurity thing is relatively young. I've tried to demonstrate that it's growing rapidly. So you need to consider how can you invest your time and efforts here to reap certain rewards? What niches are there for, to, for you to carve out and exploit? And yes, we need to aggregate. Nigeria is not enough. We need to look at West Africa. Can we develop West Africa solutions, not just rivers or Nigeria solutions? There are a lot of things we have to keep in mind, and one of them is a term that I heard several years ago called techno-colonization. And basically, it's colonialism as we read about it in school, but applied in this realm of technology. There are countries that they smile at us, but they will restrict us. When you look at encryption, when it was initially developed in the US, they refused to allow export because it was too, we are not responsible enough to manage it. So we have to develop our own. We have to be able to control our own connectivity. Broadband is excellent, but if your email has to go through Chicago to come back to the person in the other row, that's not good enough. We need our local internet exchange points. We need, more importantly, to develop sustainable businesses, small-scale enterprises that employ people like you, those under 35 years of age. That, in the long run, is what is going to provide us with the level of security we need. Now, Nigeria is actually embarking on a cybersecurity, the development of a cybersecurity ecosystem. And this generally, this image generally, shows some of the stakeholders and players. In yellow and red here, the innovators, that's you. You need to occupy that space. You need to own that space. You need to drive that space. You need to be able to provide goods and services, products and services, to all the other players in this proposed framework. Now, I've been very honored to be part of, in fact, the lead consultant for the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDDA, who funded and continued to support the development of this computer emergency readiness and response ecosystem for Nigeria. And NIDDA graciously gave us the leeway to be able to put in place a number of things. But this is just very quickly to show you. We've done some capacity building. We've provided some equipment for a cyber forensics laboratory. And yes, we also have basically what we call a fusion center where we can look at information coming in from various places. So this is actually up and running and it's working. Again, one of the very, very interesting things that we've done within the Fusion Center is something called a honeypot. And the honeypot basically allows us geographically to, tr to track the source of hackers. And the hackers, believe it or not, come from all over the place. Russia, China, America, the UK, South Africa, you name it. They are trying, you see, as Nigerians, we often worry, oh, what are we sending to the world? What, how are we attacking the world? But how is the world attacking us? And what are we doing to protect ourselves? And like I said, all of these challenges open up opportunities for you. These are for you. Vulnerability management, development of apps and software, standards and testing today. There is no bank that doesn't want to have some kind of card, ATM or whatever. But those cards must meet certain standards, else the bank cannot do that business. Who is helping them, not just to develop the standards, but to maintain the standards, to do the repeat training that is required so that people may stay within standards? These are the kind of 
consulting opportunities that are there for you. You can even set up cybersecurity associations and bodies. So you don't have to be, in quotes, that guru. But yes, if you can understand IP addressing, it does help. If you don't, you can learn it. It's easy. So you go on intrusion detection, cyber fraud. I mean, these niches, these opportunities abound. It is for you to take them. And we need to look at the income models. Yes, pay as you go, as they say, cash and carry. You also have public-private partnerships. You have um, social entrepreneurship. And like many of the large corporations in the world that leverage advertising revenues, this is how you can make money. This is, it's money that pays your children's school fees, that buys your car, that puts diesel in your generator, that pays for your maintenance. So again, these are just some of the models. And I will move along a little f faster. But you need some skill sets. You need to have some level of information literacy. You just don't go into this thing blind. Please, ladies and gentlemen, remember, like any other business in the world today, if you are not globally competitive, you are not competitive. Bottom line. So please understand, if you are taking an exam as a high school student, your competition is not the high school down the road. Your competition is the high school in Hong Kong, in New York, in London, or Lancaster, wherever, in, in Paris, wherever it happens to be. The, you must think in those kind of terms. And that is it. Thinking is actually free. When you are building your business, when you are building your opportunity, do not focus exclusively on high tech. It's a combination of high tech, low tech, and in many instances, no technology at all. Some would say common sense. Some would say muscle power. Whatever it is. So you need to look at these things. We're trying to build a 21st century knowledge society. And the truth of the matter is that we haven't a clue how to protect it. And that worries me, personally. And it should worry each and every one of you. Our infrastructure that we're building, the government is spending a lot of money on power, as it should and as it must. But how are those infrastructure protected? We have to think about these things. And yes, these tools are extremely powerful. They cut both ways. People can monitor your phone lines. People can monitor your calls. I'm not talking about government people. I'm talking about private enterprises. Any of you with an Android phone and a Google account, please, after this, log on to um, maps.google.com and log in you will see where you have been for the last 30 days. And for those young men, don't let Madame see it. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, where do we need to be? I propose where we need to be is at a point where we are building and developing a micro, small, medium-scale enterprises sector, industrial sector, that provides cybersecurity solutions developed by West Africans, first for West Africans and then for others. This sector needs to be driven and powered by our youth, those who are under five, 35 years of age. Ladies and gentlemen, my request and my message to you is that this can be done, we can do it, and we can do it together. Thank you very much.